thank you sorry sorry about that uh technical difficulties thank you jank for helping out i really really appreciate it for you being on the podcast and for you helping helping me out uh so yeah let's start with the podcast how are you doing today jank apart from this pretty mess. good i got a bloody nose about five seconds ago literally <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> what happened? I haven't had a bloody. I don't know. I haven't had a bloody nose in God knows how long. It's kind of hot in my apartment right now, so maybe that's it. But um, yeah, it was kind of weird. Mm, that's crazy. Uh, did you put some cotton in to stop the bleeding? Yeah, I got some tissue with me right now. That's nice. That's nice. That's uh, that's crazy. Uh, it it's almost winter, right? So. It, <laughs> Yeah, but it's still like 85 plus here. Oh, damn. It's hot, hotter than India right now. Man. I could imagine, yeah. It's uh, <laughs> pretty sweaty. Well, I hope you get well soon and that now doesn't happen again. God damn, that's crazy. Uh, how was your week so far? Uh, it's been fine. Broke some ribs last week. Uh, hand hurts a little bit, but um, other than that, no news is good news, right? Yeah, no news is good news too. Look, glass half full. Well, I mean, things are always go- already going well, so if uh, nothing changes, that's always a fine thing. Oh, it's turning upwards. I like it. I like it. So. I'm going to say a uh, little bit about this podcast, what th- this podcast will be about or what I think it should be about. So dif- uh, difficult conversations are what moves humanity forward and helps us grow as a person. The conversations that will be had here are going to be critically thought out as close as it can be and logically consistent while keeping it light hard hearted. Now that's the goal. I will try to, it, this needs, everything will be quick, uh, sorry about that. be a giant asterisk right there, every podcast, no matter if it's <laughs> me or fucking anyone on it, you know what I mean? Of course, there, there is the two asterisk, terms and conditions applied. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I will try to make it, uh, Critic, uh, to enforce critical thinking or have that on our pod- on this podcast and have interesting conversations with our future guests. Uh, we will be talking about we will be talking about different stuff today. We will be talking about comedy. We will be talking about politics. We will be talking about cows in India in the future. We will be talking about the culture in Germany and. Uh, Latvia very soon actually tomorrow Pasha will be on there we'll be talking about fashion tomorrow uh, with Rick Owens uh, <laughs> if you all remember him uh, uh, prefer says yeah that's the goal but it'll turn it turn in turn into turn, turn it into a destiny full-blown shout out fest I really hope not uh, because when we are shouting at each other we are not actually uh, thinking about what the other person is saying. So, if you're well, not, I, I don't think that's a fair representation. When I'm shouting, I'm usually thinking about what you're saying. It just I'm not trying to progress the conversation further because at that point, usually it seems like there isn't much more progress to be made. Um, again, sometimes that's my responsibility, and sometimes that's on the other person, depending on the conversation. <laughs> but, yep. But- uh, if the if oh yeah, I'm stoked on Pasha. By the way, I'm really stoked on Pasha. <laughs> uh, so you said uh, if you're shouting the conversation, there's nothing to add more to the conversation. So it's if you're shouting at him, there's no pointing a uh, point in wasting your energy by shouting at them. It's it's um, be- no, it can it can be really fun, like really fun. You know what I mean? I mean. I'm not trying to be like an asshole or anything, but like when people like start insulting you or trying to get personal, 
it's fun to go back on them, especially when it's deserved because they did it first. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> it is content, though. I would have to agree with that. It is content. Yeah, that's a <laughs> that's a interesting discussion also if you want to put that on a list for another day that's something you should write down like the difference between <laughs> like uh you know toxic content or like angry violent talk to- or content compared toward uh to um i don't know uh content that like is constructive in a certain sense the, it's, yeah uh, lots lots of stuff uh, lots of content on youtube and twitch these days have turned turned into turned into uh dramatic content o- over dramatizing everything that is happening over dramatic over dramatizing your happiness over dramatizing uh feud with someone like and so it is fun to watch it is fun sometimes to be there but i don't think we'll grow too much by doing that it is growth is like we after end of every conversation there should be something we we are learning or we are gaining some sort of knowledge do, do you feel me uh yes for the most part i agree um sometimes you just have the same conversation over and over again but it's just a new person repeating the exact same thoughts that are um, posted online or um, said in a video or something like that, that when you question on them on them, they can't like back them up or they were resort back to I'm trolling five days later um, <laughs> and stuff like that, where it's just like, you don't, you don't gain anything from those conversations. And you know, um, that's a whole nother, <laughs> con- yeah, that's a whole nother conversation in itself. That is very true. In this age of social media and Facebook and Twitter, so you you have to be you have to be very careful where you getting your source uh, knowledge from, where you're gaining those, uh, uh, where you where are you building those ideas from. Usually, uh, in scientific community, it's the the papers are peer reviewed and uh, retested uh, or cross verified to make sure the the information that is, that is getting spread out is actually uh, act, actually actually scientifically relevant y- you see yeah um so i'd say scientifically accurate is a better word and the only reason i bring up that that's like relevant isn't necessarily the best word is because if you're getting your information from different sources even though they're citing like scientific papers and stuff like that it's their interpretation of that data that you yourself are one either too um busy lazy whatever it is to look into or not informed enough to understand yourself um and they can spin that in a variety of different ways that is very very harmful um a very like relevant example of this right now or um uh, well actually yeah it's still relevant right now is like race realism which is people that try and argue that there's intrinsic differences between races that have significant um, standing within society due to um, things like DNA, biological markers, and they use starting arguments such as like, oh, there's biological markers and we could pro- like most likely figure out what race you are. And it's like, yes, that's because most races are ge- uh, geologically and like, uh, there's like a bunch of different things there and then they try and tie it back into like things like uh, intris- intrinsic IQ of colored people, um, violence, um, superiority, and then try and uh, tie that into laws or policies that affect those people and it can be um, a not so good thing, you know? Uh, that is very true. So the thing is with the race realism i i do not exactly know what you're talking about which topic but uh but i would say this uh, that considering uh when we are uh, this scientific research is done among these kind of uh, these kind of ra- race realism topic suppose uh for one is that they are ta- they are taking statistics from everyday world and stati- uh, lots of times they uh, 
it depends on the person who's analyzing those statistics or how how he, is he interpreting it the so if it if it's statistically relevant lots of times the biases from from the researcher can be seen in the statistics and especially due to the how media tries to bra- uh, break headlines so even a, a certain statement about uh, st- a certain statement about the race realism or a paper about it it wouldn't necessarily say some things but the media will portray it as like they did uh portray it as a, what was i trying to say like it's a uh, horrific or some sort or uh somehow black people are uh in uh, suppo- uh, commit more crime than white people like like that or they have done with uh there i think you might have seen the ca- coffee coffee cures cancer headlines where they took took a single line from a research paper which was not nowhere closely related and made a headline out of it that's what happens usually in the media they're trying to uh, ex- uh, exceptionalize everything and make a headline out of it so they they can sell the news yes um so y- ex- that's yes i agree um completely but what it also goes further from is like not just mainstream media people try and claim that you know like looking at these smaller sources or like um these internet politics whether it be from the right or the left or centrist um, policies and just look into one or two or even um, a group because you can um, very much see like I don't know if you follow a lot of these people that talk about these issues online or um, in person uh, depending on who they are Um, a lot of times it's both they tend to stay around groups of people that um, can kind of be seen as what people call an echo chamber and things like that so again, those people also have the same um, bias to try and get views, to try and start drama, to try and start stuff like this in order to make it interesting. Um, this has been seen like a lot in the current Twitch thing with Destiny. Um, he himself uh, made like a pretty uh, bold statement, worded it absolutely terribly. And it's been taken off from both the right and the left to gain views. And he's gained a lot of views for it, too. I think he had over 15,000 viewers yesterday while he was going over a, like, basically what's described as a manifesto, like a essay-long post about his uh, opinions of private versus public usage, a.k.a. making edgy jokes to your friends um, in a private setting. Um but, you know, it can be seen everywhere is my point. And it's just, it's really, really hard, even if you're trying to um, get good sources or multiple sources or unbiased sources and things like that. Mm-hmm. That is, <laughs> uh, yeah, the destiny thing is crazy. It's crazy. The private, uh, private and public usage, uh, the problem with that is... Uh, it i don't people should not care what is happening inside a room like you can do uh, anything you want unless if as long as you're not harming anyone in that room people are uh, pe- i wouldn't say I, okay these these are half thought out but what i'm trying to say is what happens with private versus public usage your what you do in private or what the kind of language you use in uh, your private setting tends to leak out in the public that speaking from personal yes. experience speaking from personal experience that has happened to me like when i was in uh uh when i was in uh, us studying uh, for my college in the first very first year uh, uh i was in the international hall and uh, i was hanging out with all different kinds of people from all different kinds of countries so we were all right making jokes with each other uh which not be politically correct i would say and when i start uh when i took a job uh at the co- in the university as a resident assistant i was going through the training program and so i learned a lot a lot of things about that can be uh how it how it's perceived to the people outside of that group how yeah so um a good point to um kind of 
before we get uh, into like a different plant and stuff like that is um, kind of like the does a tree fall in the woods and no one's there to hear it doesn't make a sound blah 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 so um, if you tell it and you mentioned like as long as you don't hurt people between the closed doors um, but it has a tendency to leak out so let's say um, I'm playing CSGO and I spam the n-word at my opponents and I have a position in a community whether it be I'm a mm -hmm. streamer like you know Mitch Jones this happened to recently with his like leaked DMs and stuff like that actually the Mitch Jones one doesn't follow my example but if somebody else leaks that who is the person that's at fault at that point for bringing things to attention and then spreading that kind of um, behavior and um, awareness towards that topic so like if you and me are sitting there and you uh say the n-word a couple times and i'm comfortable with it you know like mm -hmm. you know re joking or let's say you know reuse like the f-word or something like that. who fucking cares point being um and then i'm the one who posts screenshots of it everywhere who's <laughs> the one who's at fault for that or for making it public at least um, not for the private usage because the private usage has already been discussed <laughs> I mean, if there's not a written agreement uh, and when you're say sharing information with someone, the other person can do anything with, the, with that information. Yeah, so my so point is it's... you putting that information out there means that you're the one who's putting that information out there and thus making it more aware rather than me who's sitting there and in agreement that we both thought this was funny mm -hmm. in private and it's between uh, closed doors, as you said, where it doesn't matter then we have the different topic of spreading that so if i then spread that information am i the one who um even though i thought it was okay and i do think it's okay am i at fault for um bringing awareness to it and then bringing it to the public attention no <laughs> if you're sharing Why it not? Like, of course of course you break the trust of the person you're sharing the information so about if I if send they believe, you, so if, if they, i send you my dick pic so if i send you my dick pic because you want it and we're all down with that shit and i think my dick will offend you know people in public because whether they're um don't want to consensually see it or they um can't consensually see it via the law their age or something like that mental status i guess also can apply um and shit like that but you leak my dick pic everywhere am i at fault for taking a picture of my dick and now I spread it everywhere because between closed doors, it was okay. But now you're the one who spread it everywhere and made everyone see it. But that's a whole different conversation, right? How that, is that, it different? There's, there, how, well, there, what there, are the differences there's, there? There's a clear law against revenge porn. You can't, you're not allowed to share someone's private nude pics uh, online, if, even if you have it. Uh, uh, okay, so right? then let's say the picture of me. Um, doing uh let's say i am smoking okay. weed and we're both smoking weed together and then you share the picture and i smoke weed in my private time and i'm okay with smoking weed in my private time mm -hmm. but now the public is offended that i smoke weed in my private time or that i made it public sorry that i smoke weed not that i smoke weed in my private time they're okay with that but they're offended that i made it public that i smoke weed because it could affect the young viewers and uh, influence them in a certain way. Is it not your fault for then showing all the young viewers that I'm the one who smokes weed? Because I was just smoking weed between private setting. And we agreed that what I do in private setting, you already agreed to this, is 100% okay and nobody should bother with that. There's a, there's a really good example for this, like a real life example. So the the so let's, uh, so there was, you know, the NBA, right? Uh, the Lakers. Hello? Yes. Yeah. I, yes. Sorry. So, I didn't know you needed yeah. Did I mute anything? No, 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 no. I meant, I, yes, of course, I know the Lakers. Yeah, yeah, Boston yeah. yeah. So I just want to, uh, yeah. So the uh, few years ago, like two, three years ago, the uh, the player uh, D'Angelo Russell, who currently plays for the Nets, used to play for the Lakers, as well as uh, there was Swaggy P. Nick Young, uh, Nick Young, who also used to play for the Lakers. So in private, they had a conversation at their apartment about smoking weed uh, and stuff like that. 
which will be definitely be harmful outside that room because they are both NBA players and they are not allowed Whoa, to, they they are not allowed to smoke fo- weed. Yeah, yeah, but doesn't this follow your like revenge porn where there is an this authoritarian is, that's oh, why, where there is an this, a, where this, there's an authority, an actual authority that has a rule against that actual thing. This, so if you're going to use this example that neg- negligates your example of the revenge let me let me let me finish let me let me finish my let me finish my point so this has been played out in real uh real life so what there's no law against uh, smoking weed but the nba has a a rule and uh, rule against uh, smoking weed uh, or doing uh even recreationally so he so d'angelo russell the uh D'Angelo Russell uh, said this on a podcast and it uh, ruined Nick Young's reputation around the league and he was scrutinized but he was he uh, this didn't break any law because uh, it but wasn't did it break a rule it, in the league did it break it, a rule in the league there, uh, any rules or just his reputation so he was probably he's he was probably fine I believe but Okay, so but again, that's an appeal there was, to authorities. There's, there's no we definite. Have to take that out of this context. If there's we're just no... talking about how his fans thought about him or how the public viewed him because of that, not because of the authoritarian view of him, which you applied towards the um, leaking nude pictures and um, private or um, what's it called? Revenge porn, which actually isn't a law in all places. And most places, the laws are very weird regarding it. So, again, I don't know if you necessarily want to use that as a definitive example. But the the law will be harsher on you if you leak someone's... The law will be harsher on you if you leak someone's nudes. Then if you, there you is say, a law against that. you saying... And you in s- context the, of the NBA, within the NBA and his performance and his um, punitive actions within the NBA and then someone's actual, like, punitive actions in real life when they're committing like an actual crime are like how are you trying to compare these two things this... so the the severe uh, what i'm saying is the severity of those two things is different there's yes, a but if we're there, talking there's about a... the moral if we're talking about the actual like moral or like deep down into it of who leaked the public things and made it public and why if it was okay between them and private and somebody making it public, whose responsibility is it for making it public? If we already said behind private, it's no one's business. You already agreed to that. Mm. So if somebody makes something public that was between private, mm-hmm. is it not the person who makes the actions responsibility for that? Or is it the person who between private, it was already okay, but just because now somebody decided to, whether it be secretly record it or consensually take a picture that was just for private use, which again, between closed doors, still okay. But somebody else makes it public. Why are you at fault for making it public? I'm not saying that you don't take responsibility for your actions. Like I smoke weed, like, okay, like, you know, I do that, like shit, like you caught me. Don't get me wrong on that. Like that's a completely different thing that I think everyone agrees on. That's not a nuanced topic whatsoever. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you, what you are saying is the person who who said who uh, who said that uh, to the other person is at fault, right? No, the person who like who, secretly who le- took a picture of you guys smoking the weed and leaked it, or the person who um, decides to release your private nudes, or um, you know things along those lines. It's on the person who leaked it. Yeah, fault for making it public. Both both are at fault. The per- person who who thought it was why pr- is the person why is the person at fault who did the action in private when you already said and stated blatantly and you haven't refuted it yet that if something happens in private between closed doors it is not like open to public opinion. So now that somebody else, whether it be secretly or uh, let's just do it secretly for now. And then you can try and argue the difference between them doing it secretly or them just doing it openly because that's just an easy difference anyway. So let's say I secretly take a picture of us, me and you, smoking weed, Teddy. You go back to India and I decide to leak that picture. 
You get mm-hmm. arrested and stoned to death in India. Mm-hmm. Whose fault is it that made it public and public information that you smoke weed? <laughs> is it mine or yours? Uh, so the person who actually de- did in this case that would be supposedly me somehow okay. uh, that the, okay. that for doing the thing I already know which is wrong and but I you tr- I, said, I, I, I said it's okay as long as it's between private people and that it doesn't harm anybody else so why is it a difference now that I decided to secretly record you smoking weed and deliver it to the government like, why is that now, like, your fault? What Be- did you do wrong there? I smoked weed, which is not, which but is supposed, said supposedly. That was okay, but supposedly. You said that was okay between private doors, which you were in, like, between private people or between closed doors or whatever the fuck you want to call it. No. You already said that that's okay. Um, I, th- that's okay between uh, um. We were talking about using the joke, using jokes, which are not well, poli- yeah, using jokes general, pol- politically. You're you're equating so two I'm different things. Using some, well, I'm you're, saying doing something in private, doing something anything in private. And if, all right, so let's say um. Did you, again, this is just a destiny example, and I really don't want to use his stupid examples. But would do you have sex with your girlfriend, Ted? Yeah, I mean, not in a while, but sure, maybe in the past. Would you would you have sex in front of her dad? But though there's a there's a social norms and there are social rules that pe- you, people follow. But why are those? What are the? What makes those correct? Because you want to be the part why? of the community. If you don't want to be part oh, of the community, so you can do. You like, can. Do you have to okay. follow the social norms. Yeah, you want to feel good. Yes, being a part of the community makes people feel good. Okay. So you have to follow the social norms, the rules in that society. Do you, um, do you feel me? So if I, no. if I So if the social norm in society is slavery, we have to follow that. People followed that during that time. And but it doesn't right that doesn't it? doesn't or doesn't they doesn't because of it? Those, they those are right because of it? those are two or different are they right because of it yes or no yes or no of course they not right for following the social norms so but, then you can't say that because you're following social norms that you are right so you cannot use that argument in this conversation without just it, literally being uh, a hypocrite i'm sorry i'm saying it's not right to have sex in front of your dad do you see the the? I do, agree. Do you do you see the I lo- agree. the flaw in your in your statement? So what's so the point? If I release a sex tip to your dad and it's not okay, are you at fault for having sex with your girlfriend? Does that make make having sex with your girlfriend <laughs> wrong, or does but, it make me releasing a private sex tape of you and your girlfriend to your dad wrong? That's the question here, Ted. <laughs> There's a clear law against that in most places. I, you can I still, mean, depending on the context, you can, possibly, but you again, can make, I, you, I'm not trying to appeal to the law. I really am not. Like, that's not my and, thing. And if that's what you're going to appeal towards, the, then that's fine. I tried to bring up other examples, and you didn't want to deal with those either. Let's, so if you want to move on, I'm fine. The the, the thing is, the, you're pre- presenting different uh, severity of uh, examples. The the one making jokes is way the different. The severity they, should not matter it's on the case by context of whether something is right or wrong unless you can provide an example that applies to everything of why that is right or wrong you can't just pick and choose that you feel that the severity of something makes things different it just doesn't make sense ted let's 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 agree to disagree I, there's there can't be a universe i believe yeah. there can't be a universal law for one single thing everything is case by I, case basis not saying that there's a universal law but you're basically what I'm saying is no not at all what i'm saying is that there are things that follow patterns whether it be um i right i i don't know if i can get all the way into this and because then we're just getting right back into this conversation but point being you don't have to have a universal law there are certain things that follow patterns and you can deductively reason that things are similar whether the circumstances are different whether it be um you're smoking getting caught smoking weed and someone sends a picture of it or you're getting caught um taking a shit in the bathroom with no nudity and somebody takes a picture of it and sends it around 
Those things can be, if we're talking about the context of our conversation, those things can be equated very easily. And for you to say that, and you can just feel that there are little differences that can be applied to this one and that one that don't actually follow and get shot down, it doesn't really make an argument. It just makes it, you know, that you feel that way. And that's fine if you feel that way. I'm not trying to like argue against like what you want or something like that, but I just, there's no way for me to engage with that kind of thinking, if that makes sense. Jank, what our conversation started from was like making a joke or using uh, making a joke uh, um, between in private versus using that joke yeah, in public. So doing that, something that, in that, private that that doesn't equate to uh, taking uh, having sex in private and leaking that so in public. Do, that those two cases those, are completely different. So the equivalent is you're doing something in private that does not harm other people. You said in general. You should not be, um, what happens between closed doors happens between closed doors. How is having, um, how is that the fact that neither of them harm other people different in that fact? Please explain that to me. I, I did not say how that. What I, what, different? what I well, said, you, what I, what I said, can. what I said was uh, making jokes in private. It, the, it, there's a possibility of leak that so, leaks leaks into public. What I mean is, when I'm making joke with my fr- the the kind of jokes I'm the kind of jokes I'm making with my friends. When I when I go into professional settings, sometimes my instinct will take over and I might make that joke in public, which is not okay in, well, I- around that setting. I don't know. That's I don't what have I was that saying. Instinct. I I can't really relate to that. But, I don't have the instinct to make um, that, terrible jokes in public uh, that I do make in private just like i don't have the instinct to um grab someone's tits or their crotch while i'm in public um what should i do when i'm in private with consenting adults and i don't see how two harmful act unharmful acts such as telling a joke between two consenting people or um, having sexual relations between two consenting people are any different and why that in private they should be okay and if you think that either of those in private shouldn't be okay, yes or no? I, I'm i not okay with a lot of jokes. So if someone makes a, the, that kind of joke, it's not okay with me. It's so not okay with me. If you, if you are consenting to the joke, just like there's a lot of different sexual acts that I'm not consenting to, I think we can go back into the gay rape conversation with you, but whether it's funny or not. But um, that's just a meme. Um, but point being, if you have consent for the joke, is it fine to tell the joke in private? Is it hurting other people? I can it, get, that's the question. Is I can, it hurting other people? Yes or no? I can consent to something. Doesn't mean I will like it after. Okay. S- sure. I agree. Same with uh, if you wanted, to, if you consented to getting pegged, that does not mean you'd like it after. I'm sure. Point being, would it hurt other people? Of course it would. How? You just between hurt. closed doors, it would hurt if, other if, people. Between between us, it would I, actually like harm if, other people. If, if if someone showed me that, I wouldn't be a fan of it. Wait, no, you consented to X, and X happened between we, you and someone else. Yeah. In between closed doors. Yeah. And nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else further. That's yeah. it. How does that hurt other people? Between closed between closed but, doors. That's a between complete... closed doors. It, ha- it, oh, it happened. Just just this answer. It happens between closed doors. It doesn't hurt anyone else. There's consent. It's okay, right? Mm-hmm. Same with the joke. Correct. Yeah. Closed doors. Consent. Okay. Yeah. So now you. What's the difference between leaking either one? <laughs> if someone leaks Whether it, it happens. No, I'm not saying a picture that has nudity or an illegal picture or anything illegal. If, but leaking either one that you got pegged and shit like that, and you, you know how you feel about it in public, how is that different from leaking your edgy joke? What? How is it different? The, how is the. How is does getting that, getting pegged? Make, how is getting pegged equal equal wrong? equal to getting pegged? So Are that, you saying that? 
No, so how does getting pegged or whatever sexual act it was, even if it was regular sex, because regular sex between unmarried adults is not okay in your country, and it's um, looked down upon, and you'd get stoned or killed, maybe. Who knows? Now that it happened in private, and you said it was okay, when, when it's made public, it's now actually not okay to you? Why? Why is you having what, sex with your girlfriend or you getting pegged by your girlfriend now not okay to you now that it's public? Because I wouldn't like it. I might have consented it. So yeah, you wouldn't like the fact that somebody made it public, right? No, I might because not have I, mean li- I, might, it... I might not have liked getting pegged what does and that have get... to do with anything. What does that have to do with anything? Please because explain. the public opinion about that person will change and words yeah, so can your hurt feelings people. Feelings would get yeah, hurt because exactly. you feel that you're getting emasculated. Okay? Exactly. That is the, the public sure. opinion would change and that that is sure. that is very and, important to people. And if you're not willing to live with the public opinion of what you do in your private life and tell them that you know what I do in my private life is okay, then yeah, sure, that's I'd, fine with me. I mean, I'd call just, that spineless or a pussy, but that's just fine. just like today, you wanted you didn't want it to talk about a lot of stuff that's private to you. There's no reason there there's yeah, no reason and to I make it talk public about it. And yeah, I wouldn't talk about it public. Would, but if you would, made you, the if, topics, if you made the topics that I wanted to talk about in private, or yeah. didn't want to talk, about, I'd say yes. I didn't want to talk about those topics in private. That's fine. But if now everyone is offended about the fact that those topics existed, that would be on you for bringing that up. That wouldn't be on me. I didn't bring that to their attention. You're the one who brought that to the public attention before it was in closed doors. And we already said closed doors is okay. Now, yeah. public, that's on you. So you're at fault. Not me, you. But who's getting hurt, though? Is the person what who's leaking getting what hurt? What do you mean who's getting hurt? Is Socially? the person? I don't give a no. fuck. Feelings, whose feelings is getting hurt? I'm not talking about you. Think about so, yourself. Yeah, think about someone else. You're hurting think, the think person about, who's leaking think about, feelings. You're hurting my feelings from exactly. what was between closed doors. You're, you're getting hurting, hurt. So you're in the wrong again. You're getting, you're, so you're in the wrong again for leaking things that was okay between closed doors and making them public, which you're arguing is not okay. So and, you're at fault <laughs> for putting them in the public and you're at fault for breaking the trust of our private conversation. <laughs> but there's no written consensual there's no written agreement that i don't i need to share it, not no, share the not private legal. conversation that's not fine, that's, not fine. Yeah. that's fine there's so, no legal like thing there or anything yeah, like that but yeah. you're still at fault for doing it you took the action so you're yeah. at fault for the results so the in the example of D'Angelo Russell and Nick Young, D- D'Angelo R- Russell who got uh, who leaked the information got ridiculed by people. People called him snitch. People called him uh, a bad teammate. People called him a lot of things. His public opinion uh, hurt as well. It, both both were at fault. Yes. Both were well, at no, fault. He's the only one who's at one, fault. The other one person who's... might have been hurt by the public opinion, but that does not apply them fault. One who's smoking. That's a very who's smoke, big difference. One who's smoking the weed is also at fault. Action. He's yes. at fault for his own actions in private, but he is not at fault for making that public and bringing that to the public's attention, Ted. That's what we've been saying the entire time. <laughs> If you murder someone in private, doesn't make it right. Again, we are now going towards the appeal to Ex- authority thing. Ex- Sorry. They're, hey, they're... If you just want to take murder in general, what if it's self-defense? I mean, um, if you're trying to say murder is like you, uh, just completely you... illegal, like killing of somebody, then we're just saying like, yes, it's illegal. So, of course, it's not okay. You're taking someone's bodily autonomy. There's other moral things at play other than just lying there again i'm not somebody who's just a consequent or maybe i am a consequentialist where i think the consequence of the actions of um, having a murderer being uh, found out and things like that is much more important than it is to um, keep a private conversation between two people of somebody that literally murdered somebody so again if that's the hill you want to die on i'm down to do it but we're just going into circles with more examples I'm bringing up the exact same examples to defend my point. And you're just trying to come up with other like nuanced little things like of why it doesn't work. And 
again, if you have a position you want to stay on, I'm down. And if we agree to disagree on that one position, that's fine. But if you want to keep running through them, we could run through them until you are out of them. You're just twisting my word. You what uh, what I'm saying is what both are both twisting? what I, what I'm saying is both parties are at fault, and what you're saying is only the person who leaks it is at fault. Well, is that well, the person, the only person at fault for making a private thing, which was okay in private, which we already agreed on, something that's okay in private, not murder. Nothing like Why that. Not? Why not? Why not? That's that's a private are, thing. Are you, we consented. So, are you, so you're okay. So you think murder's consent? There's consent so to murder. This is uh, this is happening in private, right? If you murdered someone and I knew oh, about it, and okay. we uh, at first right. I said right. I, we, we, I'm not gonna tell anyone, but after you murdered someone, I didn't feel good good about it, and I and this is I felt this is not right, so I leaked it okay. into the public. So am I? So, am okay. I, I, is okay. the person who murdered that is at fault? I don't even know what the fuck you're saying anymore, Ted, at this point. Like, okay, you let's, I let's, literally let's, think you went off the deep let's, end. Let's just move on. Let's just move on. So, <laughs> this was supposed to... I think we... Uh, this is a little bit a little bit of intro. I should have... We uh, got distracted into a different conversation. Uh, but, yeah. So, the jank... It, uh, our today's guest is a Sam Pepper admin, a part-time beer brewer, and a full-time debater. <laughs> as you can tell, for the past, I don't know how many minutes we did, as we did. Uh, tell sure, us a little bit. That's, that's a fine description of me. Um, yeah, I, I'm an admin on that. All those are 100% true, Ted. Awesome, awesome. Tell us a little bit something about you, Jank. I think we did this, but yeah, a little bit you want, you can let us know uh, what you like, what you dislike. I love um, cold brew coffee, eating uh, great food, and recently I've been into trying to create my own good food, uh, cooking and things like that. It's oh. been a fun endeavor. Really? What, what, what did you cook? Any Any... Um, I've been doing recently, I've been trying to do like a lot of doughs for like breads in just like my regular oven and things like that. I've experimented with a couple like crock pot uh, recipes to be able to eat like throughout the week, uh, like hearty meals and stuff like that. Um, you know, just like home cooking thing. I'm not trying to be like a fucking Michelin chef or anything like that. Um, just, you know, master the home cooking. I made some amazing fucking brownies, realized that there's like a uh, insane different between uh, difference between the types of flours that you use so i can get like these really chewy brownies every time by just like guaranteeing um you know the the consistency and everything like that via the flour so uh that's cool it's just you know things like that that's very nice nice that's awesome you seem a little bit uh seem to enjoy a hobby that's nice uh do i i like sourdough bread that's that's just my bias <laughs> i so, love sourdough i love french bread too um but sourdough is really good i love the tanginess and especially what it adds to like a lot of things so you don't have to like add that mustard to it you know how like mustard has yeah that, like, to it but sometimes i'm not in the mood for mustard at all especially depending on the meat and the other sandwich combinations and sourdough can provide that like balance to the sandwich yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, it's it's really nice. It's really nice. I can't express my <laughs> feelings about sourdough bread that well, but you put it very well. Uh, so tell us, uh, a, as we know, you're a Sam Pepper admin. How did you how did you find Sam? How in this vast social media YouTube world, in the corners of YouTube, dark dark corners, <laughs> how did you find well, Sam Pepper? I found him in the darkest corner. <laughs> um, it was an Ice Poseidon stream. I had never heard of Sam Pepper before that. I don't think I might have like randomly heard of him um, through other things, but I never really watched Big Brother. Um, I wasn't into YouTube. Besides, I actually had just gotten into like any kind of YouTube whatsoever. Like for some reason, I never watched it growing up through college, through high school, anything like that. And I'd recently gotten to Twitch, and then I transferred over um after watching um some people in irl and then um on twitch 
mm -hmm. in Japan, I believe, and then watching an Ice Poseidon stream. Watch Ice Poseidon streams for like about a year, year and a half before he met Sam, and that's how I found him. Oh, nice. You met Sam in real life? Uh, yeah. Um, I was watching one of his streams one time, and um, he mentioned he needed a ride to go pick up uh, the ducks that are now TikTok famous. Yeah, and the ducks. I volunteer. <laughs> yep. And we went to the ranch, the stream F, so it's a really shitty stream of us just sitting in the car, um, almost not talking since we literally didn't know each other. <laughs> and it's in a dark freeway, and we're headed into the middle of nowhere. Reception goes out, and um yeah it's a really shitty stream but you know after that he asked me to do like camera stuff for him a couple times and then i think we lost a moderator at some point and he made me a moderator that's my story of my relationship with sam pepper nice nice how how did sam seem compared to his streams and like in real life I'm guessing that the that it uh, the stream F for a while, so you must have been real awkward. Nothing as exciting, excite not as excited as uh, on the stream. I'm guessing. How did he see? Um, yeah, we were. I mean, me and the person driving were up in front, so there was just some music. We weren't really talking, but Sam was intently watching Ice on his phone. And like I think other YouTube videos too, he was just like scrolling through different YouTube videos or something on his phone and just watching and listening to those and being fairly quiet for the most part uh, for that first time that I met him. And you know he was just like laughing at like other content and stuff like that while he had the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I remember it correctly, I believe it was Ice. It could have been something else. And I think there was a couple different ones. Nice, nice. That's awesome. That's really cool. <laughs> I think you might have heard how I found Sam Pepper. I will tell it again, I guess. <laughs> I, will... <laughs> I don't think I really heard it. Oh, you haven't? So, the, uh, I I used to, like, my stream watching history is like, I just started watching. I used to only watch YouTube videos. The only I never really watched live streams and, like, uh, I started watching live streams last year. I would watch like some games, st gaming streamers, like the popular ones, Shroud Ninja, uh, the other dude who punched the screen. I forgot his name. And like, uh, and I, I used to watch PewDiePie a lot because I was I I would hang out on YouTube. So I've been watching PewDiePie for a while. And PewDiePie last year, this year, in I think in April. Uh, jump to jump to switch to uh, D live as his main streaming platform as we all know and uh, due to that I'm guessing Sam Sam also joined D live back then am I correct yeah he did uh, when it became a thing is right with like him and um, the community that he started live streaming with like ice and everything kind of like Ice was going through some shit, and he didn't want Sam around, and Sam wanted to continue to do his own stuff, mm -hmm. and he thought, and continues to think, and I agree, that DLive is a place to kind of grab a few extra concurrent viewers, whether it be a few hundred, or just like a couple extra, depending on what he's doing. Yeah. Like you. <laughs> I'm just trying this out. I'm just trying this out. Uh, uh, but yeah, I was no, watching I like how you found him on there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So on PewDiePie's, uh, PewDie I was watching PewDiePie's very first stream when he was uh, donating to other streamers, and uh, I saw him donate to Sam Pepper, and that was I don't I have a really hazy memory of that. And uh, after that, uh, when when uh, after that, I think he kind of blew up. He was doing his IRL, and he would be on the front page of uh, T Live for a while. So whenever I after that, when I went back to DLive just to scroll through I, I saw it uh, <laughs> uh, saw, saw Sam streams and I was watching uh, watching that stream and the first stream I saw was Sam and uh, Hannah walking outside uh, and Hannah was in a banana costume I, w I think that was the stream was weird and it was funny 
and it was quirky and then i joined the discord after that from the uh, link i watched a couple of his stream i think i saw you on the on the the bomb stream that he was playing the bomb game that was a really good good stream yeah, i like that uh, i like that <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny actually because i fell asleep with my headphones on usually i take a nap when you mentioned you wanted to try and go four hours i don't think i have a full four hours in me oh, um sorry. But normally i take a no no i just uh in general um like i just take a nap like in an hour and a half usually because i'm an old fucking man not really but um, i just love naps um, so I was taking a nap with my headphones on, a phone call, and it was saying, "You're cutting off." Wait. Hello, Jang. Jang, are you just are you still there? Is it just me, not being able to hear him? Hmm. I mean, that's okay. That's okay. I think I think we are having technical difficulties, guys. I think Jank is breaking up a li little bit, but that's all right. So he was talking about the yeah. That's the first time I will just keep talking about it. But so when I I was I saw Jank, we lost Jank. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, you uh, let me just text him. And see, we can't hear you, Jank. If you can hear, hear you, Jank. Uh, you're not picking up on the Discord. Oh, okay. Testing one, two. Oh, he's back. Testing. We got him back, boys. Uh, Saved. Hello. Can, can you, you guys hear? hear? Can you guys hear him? Just so say yes if you can. Discord, call me, please, because that's what I'm looking at. I know Teddy's looking at the other one. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. Oh, saved. Right, awesome. Cool. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, I fell asleep with my headphones on. Blah blah blah. I, I woke up to a Discord call, like literally, like the ringing of a call, I believe. And mm -hmm. he was like, "Do you want to play this game or whatever?" And I was like, "Sure." So it's a game about communication. As you mentioned, it's the bomb game. Uh, it's yeah. called, um, fuck, what's it called? I'm not sure. But basically the point of the game is one person has a instruction manual for um, solving puzzles that defuse a bomb. And yeah. the other person sees the bomb and the actual puzzles. And you have to communicate via voice chat with no visual uh, representation of what the other person is seeing and solve it. Yeah. So, like, literally, as just waking up, I think it was, like, the worst time possible to ever try and do <laughs> that. And it, I mean, I think we got, like, a couple of the bombs diffused, but yeah. it, was, it wasn't pretty. Yeah, I remember, I remember it. I think uh, it, that the first two ones were the hardest and the most horrible for you guys, but it was great to watch. It was a great watch. You guys, Sam was shouting at you. You were shouting at Sam. <laughs> this is just miscommunication. And I think you got to, like, you cleared two, actually. <laughs> Somehow. No, it's, it's not yeah, bad, not I, bad. I, I That's the only I, time I played that game. Keep talking and nobody explodes. Yeah, <laughs> so that that yeah, that was that was a really funny stream and like that's the first time I saw you and like I I I watched a few of those streams that I joined the Discord and I stayed because of the Discord. I'd be honest, cause Sam. Uh, oh no 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 no! no. Actually, yeah, the Sam went to India. That that's why I stayed. I was really excited about it. It was kind of disappointing a little bit because of the several things but it, yeah, the yeah but it, i mean he had yeah. an issue with getting the battery late yeah. after he ordered it because his battery got taken from him while in <laughs> transit which again are two things that were completely out of his control yeah um after that there were a couple other issues i can't remember them specifically i think like um you know it, but basically it ended up like the hours of him streaming in india really weren't what i think he or anyone else really expected mm -hmm. um and yeah i was really excited about it too like to be honest um 
I was extremely excited when he was in India. It was yeah. a lot of fun because he had been doing LA content for a while. He seemed really excited. Yeah. He had Evan back with him, and um, I, it just seemed like, or it seemed like everything was going to be like work out, especially when watching like the Herald and the um, Bald and Bankrupt videos. Yeah. It's good. It, uh, yeah. Uh, and me being Indian, and like, I was oh, really excited. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was you were just the one of the biggest. With the Indian role, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. It, it You're got, the only one who stuck around. It it, it got took away, it taken away in the end, but I'm not salty well, or yeah. anything. No, it just doesn't exist anymore. It didn't get taken away. You're not, it's not like you're no longer Indian. It's just, that role is no longer really relevant. And although recently we've changed our views, apparently, we mm -hmm. used to just not do like meme roles unless it was relevant to the stream and say I'm actually requested it and things like that. Like oh, okay. the pumpkin roll will be yeah. gone uh, after October. We'll replace it. Yeah, we'll replace it with a turkey roll, I believe. Um, I understand. I <laughs> will be in charge of that. Yeah, you understand. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Sorry, I was. Uh, go no, ahead. No, no, I know. I'm just, I'm just but, naming shit. But yeah, so but, um, what uh, next? What what do you have actually for a topic? We haven't even gotten to a topic. We haven't, and we already talked so much. Uh, so, so how long do you have? So, so let me before we get into the topic. Um, I don't want to. If we can go till like uh, about an hour and ten minutes would be fine for me, because then I can get okay. some food before I go for a nap and stuff like yeah. that. Okay. Um, and we can try and find someone in Discord. Um, fill up the rest of your spot if you'd like, whether it be a random person or maybe you just want to. Um, engage in some videos or talk shit on me after <laughs> it. That's fine with me too. No, no, no. Yeah. So no, just thank you, thank you for staying there. Yeah. So we can let's let's get into the real topics. I kind of prepared for and our first Sam stream. Sam is streaming on Reddit, by the way. Again, I, you don't need to end or anything, but Sam is or was streaming on Reddit for a half hour. Oh, oh, you see, I I didn't even look. So. Yeah, 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 no, again, I don't mind. Like, again, it, it's it just so you're aware. Oh, Sam ended. He streamed for like 10 minutes. Ah. Oh, uh, okay. I just saw it. I literally just looked at announcements because, again, I'm consumed into this also and just kind of cleaning up my apartment since it's been a mess since I got injured. Dang. Oh, yeah. How's your. Uh, I just, just quickly. Okay, yeah. That's, that's yeah, nice. I hope you get well soon, man. I hope you get those. Yeah. Okay, let's get uh, into the okay. real topics I kind of prepared for today as a professional podcaster. Now I am, I feel like. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, you need so, help with your like, topic list, uh, by the way, for next time. I can uh, make you a template real quick that you can use um, for like a two or four hour segment, depending on what you're doing, so that yeah. you can use that for next time. I, I tried making it graphically pleasing, guys. I'm sorry. It's... <laughs> I wasted so mm -hmm. much time. I've so, it wasted looks so really much good, time. Actually. But, it's just fun. So this this is a basic template, uh, but yeah, I that's sorry, but yeah. So the today's topics we we were going to talk about comedy and another little bit of triggering topic coming after this, and not for us. I think we have the same stance, uh, but it would be a good topic, it, another political topic if you guys are interested after this. So we want to talk. I wanted to talk a little bit about comedy because I I know you kind of you like comedy I've, from the past conversations yeah. we have. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of comedy. Yeah. So how did you get into comedy? Or like, what are your first experiences of, of when you really got into it? Um. Well, my first experiences of comedy, like to be honest, are probably like. I wasn't allowed to watch things like South Park and The Simpsons growing up, like um, from my uh, mom and dad. Basically, my mom was like very controlling and manipulative in that sense. But uh, my dad's only stance was he didn't like the like dumb dad factor, which is actually some like a trope that's been attributed towards The Simpsons, South Park, and other things like that um, mm -hmm. towards a large extent. So I actually understand that. Um, but I wasn't allowed to like watch those kind of things. So like my comedy was very sterile. It mm -hmm. was like, um, 
fucking Nickelodeon bullshit. A Cartoon Network, you know, like, and, like, yeah, I could kind of, like, judge the things in between and Ren and Stimpy and, like, all the edgy humor growing up in, like, the 90s and shit like that. But um, my first real like, dive down into, like, comedy was Chappelle. Oh, that I can remember. The Chappelle Show? Yeah. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, The Chappelle Show. While it was uh, airing, like, every, a new fucking episode every week. It's and, great. And, yeah, I, and I was in um, high school, so, you know, I didn't, I think I was actually laughing at probably most of the wrong reasons. Um, I was laughing because I thought the jokes were um, a reflection on actual reality rather than on the absurd reality that other people believe in which mm-hmm. I think is kind of the context of Chappelle's jokes. And I strong, actually, I strongly believe that. And he's backed that up himself. Yeah. Um, but that actually, again, made me go into a different com- uh, comedian, Ari Shafir, who did um, edgy humor also, which I also laughed at for all the wrong reasons at the time. <laughs> Um, his famous skits are, or his famous show back when I was growing up was called The Amazing Racist. And it was a spin on The Amazing Race. And he just did sketch comedy uh, humor that was um, kind of um, supposed to be perceived as like real like interactions with society, but it was mostly scripted. Um, and that's how I started. But then recently, um, I've needed to laugh because fucking, I don't know, the like politics in the real world and everything, everyone's yelling at each other and shit. I want to hear the funny stuff. You know what I mean? 100%. 100%. Um, We are going to talk a little bit more politics later, but uh, yeah. So I'm guessing Ari Shafir and uh, Dave Chappelle are one of your favorite, few of the favorite comedians, right? Um, I don't really like follow dave Chappelle so much anymore i know he's like around and stuff but i haven't made like an effort to see him in my area uh same with ari um although i find ari extremely entertaining still i don't know necessarily know if i support all of like the like edgy humor that he makes public Mm-hmm. Um, like drugging his friend unknowingly in his own household during a podcast Ooh. and things like that. Again, um, I, I, I did not I know about that. I've only yeah, watched so you can specials. YouTube that. There's a couple podcasts on that recently. He uh, slipped Bert Kreisner or Kreisner Kreisner, um, who's like a part of like the Joe Rogan front and friends with Ari and like the Sober October crew and shit. And they were doing a podcast, and um, they were at his fam- uh, Bert's family house. Ari came over. Mm-hmm. It's sober October, um, and Bert needs to take a flight later that night. And Ari slips him Molly in ooh, his drink. Ooh, ooh. And not a fan. Not a yeah. fan about that. Not a fan. Non-consensual yeah, so, drugging is not a good thing. Uh, so yeah, I completely who would you, agree. Who would you say like? you like right now like like to watch or you go and see um so who i go and see i go and see tony hinchcliffe's um show um his comedy is actually pretty good i don't agree with his personal views or um so i think his comedy and politics kind of goes a little bit further than i'm willing to on his personal or willing to go for his personal views which mm, if i ration out maybe i might have an issue with but he has a show that's basically like a roast show. So I like roast shows right now. Like I like hearing it's a mix between a roast show and like amateur, amateur comedy. So like amateurs come up and they either fucking bomb Mm -hmm. or they kill. And then like a panel of professional comedians just roast the shit out of that person. (laughs) And it's a lot of fun. That's, that's, does seem a lot of fun. Can be, can be a little scary for the amateurs, but Hey, you gotta, you gotta go through the ropes. Oh, yeah. Well, some of them don't even realize that they're going to get roasted after, which is even funnier because they get all offended. They're like, why are you fucking roasting? And it's like, uh, that's what we do every week, every time. Like, what? Nice, nice. So do you have any like 
like uh, do you watch comedy tv shows uh right now like any of you anything you like really um i mean i don't really watch so much cable per se so like uh hbo has like the righteous gemstones which is really good mm-hmm. it's um danny mcbride and those people from like vice principals and i think that's really funny it's like over the top satirical humor where it's like pretending to be serious but like and actually like social commentary at the same time and it's just like absolutely ridiculous and like it's like probably without the social commentary it's about two steps above fart jokes but i like it it's fun nice nice Uh, i've heard good things about it i haven't really watched any comedy tv shows in a while like the last comedy anything what's what's it called sit up no stand up no 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 no. it's not stand up but the comedy t- the tv c- the big bang theory whatever whatever uh, yeah. i forgot sitcoms? sitcoms yeah i've watched those but not really uh or, or the last thing that's um, um, that i watched that so kind of like thing a good sitcom recently is i think like Oh, fuck. Never mind. It's something wives. There was actually a really good one recently, but yeah, I agree. I haven't watched cable TV has been dying. It's been dying, really. Uh, the only most of the things I've watched is on YouTube. It's, it's mad. I think the the whole technological topic on that how cable TV is dying is very interesting. And it's for another day. We can save it for another day. Okay, I wanted to ask this. What do you like about comedy? And what do you dislike about comedy? Um... So what I like and dislike about comedy is actually like really nuanced because it's almost the same thing. What I love about comedy is that you're able to break down what's socially acceptable Mm -hmm. and um, bring it to an audience that's able to laugh at it and um, think about it in a different way. But what I dislike about comedy is that people use that disingenuously in order to um, try and get normalize their views and um, spread things that are absolutely false and incorrect and try and try put people over like one step at a time. And I don't like Steven Crowder or things like that. People that um, claim that they're comedians but are obviously just social commentaries like it's just not a, like that's what i absolutely hate about comedy when you're just dragging someone down for the sake of uh, comedy when you're laughing at someone not with someone no i'm down with <laughs> laughing at people <laughs> fuck that fuck that what i'm down is when you claim something's comedy and it's not common oh, okay. Oh, okay like when okay. you sit there and um and it, Again, so this follows a couple examples. When you sit there and you say that you are like an example of this with Discord, since you mentioned that you're a, an active Discord member, mm-hmm. is when people get into conversations where they just like go off for long periods of times on topics and support them and completely um, argue for them or have conversations about them in a favorable manner. And then two days later or hours later and stuff like that say that, oh, it was just comedy. And it's like, okay, if that was comedy, that's fine. But now in the future, anything you say, I'm not going to believe. And your reputation is absolutely ruined. And I literally like what you're saying makes no sense. And like, I, I, I can't engage with it i can't um a- anything with it so um it's basically like i have to treat you since you claim that afterwards that you're lying every time that you talk on any subject that that could happen yeah that's a consequence especially when it happens everybody. 10 times or five times or 20 times <laughs> yeah that is that is a very fair statement I could not, I wouldn't disagree. Uh, so that's that about comedy. Let's move on to our, I think the, this is the final topic of the day. 
I I think me and Prefer talked about it a little bit yesterday. This is a very political topic. Oh, you got Hassan whispering in your ear. No, I'm just kidding. That's mean between me. Uh, I would. Oh, okay, okay. Oops. Cool. Uh, I agree with Jank. I hate when people do that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Uh, cool, cool. Oh, yeah, Jewhurt. I'm sure you do. <laughs> <laughs> Coming from Jewhurt. Get him, Teddy. Uh, gotta go. Nice stream. Bye, Axel. But, yeah, I'm not, I am gotta focus. Let's focus. This is, I think I sent it to you yesterday. I wanted to discuss a little bit about this. The, I, I think it was interesting. The, the very, I think on Thursday I talked this, talked about this, uh, not exactly this topic, but uh, with uh, prefer uh, the the social and uh, the, no the global polarization of uh, politic politically. Uh, so increase in partisan politics. I think it would be it it would be fine initially if we stick to U.S. But increase in partisan politics, particularly after Trump got elected or since Trump started running for president. Um, yeah, if we can stick to at least Trump for um, the beginning half and make it very clear when we're moving on to global, I think that would help me because I yeah. have... Uh, yeah, if, it would, and if, I think if, it would help if, the conversation. If, if you look at the questions, yeah, I have structured it that way. Yeah, yeah, I'm just uh, <laughs> clarifying that for yeah. both of us. And was, um, that... also, when you ask the question, uh, with starting with the first one, do you mind um, answering first just for this one? Um, because I'd like to respond to you. Sure, sure. Uh, I'm I was an outsider, so I would have preferred if you went first. But uh, how the my first question was how did uh, you feel? How did you? That's okay. Like if you still want me to go go first, I will. No, it's fine. Either way, I'm not trying to pressure you into going no. first. Um, I was just kind of, that's why I was kind of curious because I know that you are an outsider, but you're mm. also at least in the United States. And yeah. as far as global goes, you have way more insight or at least um, authoritative um, explanations on things because you have a multicultural view. While I've lived in California for like the past however many years of my life, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that is true. I, I, I will go after you because uh, I think mine is rather not very interesting. But uh, uh, how about you go first? Then we'll go uh, after. I'll I'll respond to that. Is it is it fine? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. How did how did you feel when Trump got elected in twenty sixteen? Uh, to be honest, I kind of laughed and was kind of in disbelief just because like the boomers like my mom she had like a trump bobblehead like my mom literally when you walked into her house she had like and she lives in like a four thousand square foot house very wealthy woman um i go over there on holidays and i walk in and i see a trump bobblehead still in the box <laughs> sitting on her display with like other things I think like a hat like a MAGA hat and shit like that and I just laughed every time I saw that for you know however long the election cycle was yeah yeah when he got and when he got elected it, it that that's the main thing that blew my mind was that she was correct <laughs> did you are, did you support Trump and I'm guessing from your tone you did not um no I was not a huge fan of Bernie back then either. Mm -hmm. I wasn't actually too politically um, aware or involved for most of that time because I thought the ridiculousness of um, Trump versus uh, Bernie, which both had, or Hillary, I guess, where it came down to, which again, Hillary was, it, there was just so many different like weird factors of it just being like a. Um, Pick your poison. A, no, not even that. Just like a pony show, like I, like how it always. I mean, like it's always a pony show. Don't get me wrong, but that was just like my overall feeling was like, I'm not gonna get involved with any of this clownery and like, 
it's just all stupid because none of it's going to have an effect and yada 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 out of either of them everyone fucking knows that like we, that it, it, we shouldn't pick trump at least that like i don't know about hillary like i don't think we'd necessarily be much better off in most cases besides foreign policy because and like public image of the united states because Trump has undoubtedly done like unprecedented harm to that <laughs> that hasn't like ever been even contemplated in the past with social media presence and things like that. Um, at least Hillary, the fucking boomer, she would have stayed to be probably would have stayed off Twitter. Um, that's the one hope I would have had between the two of them. And again, that's a small line, and that's why I just thought like fuck it um but as time has gone on and things has become or like i guess the times were a little bit more politically charged i think what really got me into like politics and stuff like that was um seeing incels online what do you mean by that um like these people that just like blame everything on different groups uh, most of the time at least in the case of incels when it started was woman um was just like really weird to me and it caught my attention in like the kind of way that like murder mysteries catch like white girls attention you know <laughs> mm -hmm. and like i became really intrigued by that shit and like if like this was a meme and i thought it was for the longest time but then i like met a couple people here and there online and saw them talking and again you go into that like you can meme as much as you want but at a certain point that's like it, that's like interactions a, become a reality you know what i mean yeah so when trump got like i went i, I uh I, I went to us in 2015 so i was coming from there were elections in india in 2019 so i have seen how uh, the prime minister of india got elected and I, to be honest i was not a huge fan i'm like i'm i'm not i'm not a fan of political stuff because there's so much I don't agree with uh, how they're doing stuff, but I wasn't. Uh, so I saw how the elections in India happened, and when I came to uh, came to U.S., I I was I was kind of eh about it because I knew I I was seeing the same pattern with Trump's some of the Trump's uh, campaigns and stuff. How how he was trying to use social media, how he was trying to use. Uh, uh, po polit uh, trying to make the Democrats the evil people to his supporters. How how he was trying to uh, do that because I saw the same thing. That was kind of the same thing. Modi did. Modi used uh, Facebook uh, a lot uh, and uh, to get uh, to promote his uh, to cater to his supporters and he he tried to make it partition between the two parties in India, which are BJP and Congress. It, and uh, his opponent was mm, was kind of <laughs> kind of a uh, privileged guy. But so when it when it came, but Modi's stories will, was the opposite of uh, Trump. Uh, so w when I was seeing the Trump, how Trump uh, got uh, uh, before before actually uh, before the elections, I was kind of supporting uh, Trump. To, I was basically laughing at people because both of I knew I knew Trump supporters and I knew Hillary supporters. I had both both of those friends. So uh, one one of those friends, I would say, I'd support Hillary just to just to polarize, <laughs> just to make fun of them or just to oppose them and like laugh at them. And I would say the same thing: eh? Trump is gonna get elected. You be careful. And everything went down, and like every, Hillary's emails were coming out. Trump was uh, saying uh, Hillary's stock was going down and down and down continuously. And like I was like, 
uh, I, I hold uh, I uh, I held I was an arrested an assistant back then so I held a watching party uh, uh, watching party for the election like a program uh, for the dorms I lived in and I was just surprised at the reaction because watch uh, because lots of the people I was watching with were uh, Democrat Democratic supporters and they were just they were like super confident going in like Hillary is gonna win Hillary is going to blow this uh, blow this one out blow this one out I see I saw that on the news uh, quite frequently that Hillary is gonna win and people's just face I could see the surprise in people's face how they're uh, how how disheartened they, they were feeling <laughs> seeing Trump win each state every every second or every minute or uh, every half an hour or hour it was just crazy to watch i i, I, I was yep. la- i was laughing but i was pretty i was feeling s- bad about them as well because <laughs> they were they were truly disappointed and i i believe that was the reaction they, that was the reaction of a lot of americans like i agree i completely <laughs> agree that's how it felt to me also with like uh social media groups and things like that but when it comes down to it the people that we interact with aren't necessarily um the entirety of things like we have a lot of different issues whether it be um at least for hillary like we can see she won the majority vote um Mm -hmm. people make arguments against um gerrymandering people make arguments of um also like uh prejudice is against her whether it be the woman thing that um i believe someone in chat mentioned and um you know other like different reasons whether it be like leaked emails trump being like the not a politics kind of guy even though um we've all seen that um i don't think a lot of people thought that trump would necessarily go towards like uh hmm (laughs) i think wrongfully so a lot of people did not believe that trump would go towards the authoritarian um and um extreme foreign policy and um foreign um not, not even policy just like communication and relations that he has gone through and things like that and uh, the writing was on the wall. Um, I just don't think it was um, media, like, made a big part of the media. Um, I was trying to, like, media size, but I don't think that's a word. Um, in, like, a conductive manner. And I think Trump won the media and, like, awesome for him. Yeah. Um, I believe this time, as someone in chat, I would, I believe, pointed out. Uh, it's going to be probably Warren and uh, let's let's Trump. let's stay let's stay away from 2020. Oh, let's okay. talk about it uh, after. Yeah, 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 sorry. So, uh, yeah. So the as you said, Trump won the media. Uh, media were he got the most media coverage of any nominee, I think ever probably. But the Trump was Trump was so unique and interest or good for TV. I would say. So they were the media was promoting. Uh, it had some practice with TV quick. shows. Sorry. It had some practice with TV shows. He had he had practice to be on TV. He he knew how to appeal to people, how to grow grow what the what the TV people want, or how how it's entertaining for them. Because politics generally is stressful. You're fired. Politics generally is stressful, and he made it entertaining, quote unquote. And so media media was covering him, and he also went to lots of remote places that Hillary didn't go to. Hillary catered to her majority fan base, and she kind of didn't go to lots of the red states, or she didn't pay as much attention. I saw. That's what uh, my uh political s- s- classmates told me uh, that's or and th- that's what's been reported as well uh, uh so possibly i we, haven't looked much but, into that and i'm sure there's like a million reasons again yeah it's a combination of reasons so uh, yeah, i didn't i think course. there there's a type sure right. there's a typo in the second question but uh do you think uh 
the U.S. has become more p- politically polarized after 2016? Or do you think, uh, do you think, is it, is it, uh, is it been like this for a while, for how long, or if you think um, so? Um, I don't know. Um, again, I wasn't necessarily like into politics even like at the beginning of the trump election as i admitted before from what it seems like it seems like it is increasing but just like if you look at the economy and people argue that the economy is increasing just because of trump i think actually the um right is since they call people leftists um but basically the conservatives and the right wing party were very outraged and made things very um partisan when obama was elected and obama was running so i Mm -hmm. don't think this is necessarily like something uh that happened because of trump i think this was a reaction due to obama running and including trump trump was one of the people that made a huge deal uh in media and like on social media um like traditional media and social media about obama and i think that they have um the right-wing people have been outraged and been into the whole um partisan politics and that's why trump got elected in the first place um was that they stirred that up when obama was elected or running that's very true i like obama running was a very pop very very politically active thing as well when he ran everything if the whole media got politically politically active very much so so people kind of forget like that's uh i have read this uh about uh obama running and uh when uh obama was uh, it was not as polarized people not as uh against or fighting each other but they were before as well when obama ran people were calling obama racist slurs lots of people and similar things have happened before and people just forget i kind of agree as well so with you so yeah uh um i mean i think there is nuance to it of course yeah. um but as wj uh, jwc fuck me i always say uh wjc for some odd reason um mentioned the 2000 election was also very polarizing with bush um i agree i think that there was this again that was probably like literally like who knows how fucking old i was there i'm not trying to do that math right now i'm hungry as fuck and trying to take a nap soon 19 years Uh, yeah i was a fucking baby uh not really but i was a kid and i there was a lot of I'm sure there's always a lot of polarization via politics and via media coverage of every election. Um, That one was more about like war though, than it was more about like things happening within the United States. Um, There was like global issues. Um, You know, what was happening in um, Iraq? What was happening in Afghanistan? What was happening with uh, Al Gore was on climate change and things like that. It wasn't necessarily like, um, are people what it what do we need and things like that versus people saying like oh yeah we need to get people out we need to discriminate against people we need to um load tariffs we need to become isolationists we need to become nationalists we need to become more authoritarianism um or um, more left we need to provide on the other side provide health care for our people we need to lower prison sentences. We need to help uh, the veterans. We need to provide mental health care. I think those are the deciding factors between the lines now, much um, like the defining, deciding factors were much different uh, between poli- uh, politic lines back in like Abraham Lincoln's days and stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry, that mm-hmm. was a meme. You you wanna you you wanna the, do we wanna talk about that? Do, do we no, wanna I talk about even, that? I don't even fucking. The, so the whole point okay, of that let, conversation. Let, oh, let, let me right, just right, let, go go go. I I wanna interp- interrupt. I just wanted to since we brought this up, my my statement about Abraham Lincoln was a very close statement, very uh, particular statement i think i did not think about where it, ha- where it has been used i wasn't thinking what how people have used it against or for each other i i did not mean that i was just wait, 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 trying to just trying to trying same, to 
a point you're already making, a point you're already making that I'm contending that before you go further, where since it was a closed statement, where did you hear it in a closed setting? I, I heard it on Joe Rogan's podcast of Richard Dawkins. Okay, so we can talk about that context of Richard Dawkins and Joe Rogan, right? Get, uh, I, I, will, I will say this as well. I, I'm not very familiar with D- Richard Dawkins' work. I know he's a biologist. I'm aware, <laughs> aware, aware of his, some of biological, <laughs> biological works and some of the ideas, but I'm not... I, I, I just thought he made a point. I kind of agree, agreed with it. Do that's, you really want to get into this conversation? No, no. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's, let's move <laughs> on. Let's, move on. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's move on to our next topic. I think we already discussed what reasons would you attribute to if yes or no, there was supposed to be or no there, but I missed it. But uh, apologize for that. But let's move on to the world, uh, world impact. I, I wanted to... There's a particular observation I I have seen, like a particular pattern I've seen. I'm sure people, other people have uh, seen as well. But uh, the do you think the world politics have become more polarized in general, particularly after 2016? Um, I think world politics, I can say probably so. Because, again, it seems like Obama's... Um, uh, mishaps and his contentions were more within the united states and more within like policy again uh, uh, uh we're sorry i'll continue um before i make my caveat which um we're more within the united states rather than what trumps are but if we're comparing them to bushes and those previous to him he did also have um you know, lots of negative uh, foreign things happening, such as continuing the war in the Middle East and such like that. But I think the impact has definitely increased in magnitude. I don't necessarily think that um, it's it was like, I mean, better, obviously, if it increased in magnitude. But point being, I don't think it was in a good state prior if that makes sense. True, true. Uh, actually, I, I think I didn't put it in there. But what I what what I was meant to ask, I, I will ask yeah, this. Yeah, go for uh, it. As long as long as what, stop. Uh, what I was meant to ask was that, because uh, because of Trump, so many other politicians have used similar strategies that he used. Uh, that he used in the 2016 campaign and and he's been using since since then like in wait in, are we talking in, about in, bojo are we talking about bojo we're, i'm gonna mention several names so remember when i was talking about modi as well so he he kind of used a similar strategy too and even after uh even after that he kind of isolated himself from the media he only gave access to only one media person. This is p- particularly about India. And he used, um, I think his uh, party used Facebook to spread lots of uh, hit pieces against the other party. And that's that's Modi. And then there's, of course, uh, the obvious, <laughs> obvious one, as you mentioned, Boris Johnson. <laughs> you want to talk about, about the similarities, how he used. Oh, you mean in his hair similar? <laughs> no, the the political strategies they use are very similar. Oh, I thought the hair is very much a part of the political strategy. <laughs> I, That's just me. Bojo, Boris Johnson's definitely. <laughs> I think it's a part of his personality now. He intentionally uses it to look look more relatable to the pu- public, even when even though he's a posh kid who went to Oxford, I think. <laughs> I have no idea about his background. I just love making fun of him because um, he just looks absolutely like a clown on anything. <laughs> would you? What would you describe Trump as then? A clown. <laughs> yeah. So you can. Yeah. So we can. T- he. They look. They look very similar. They kind of uh, used uh, uh, hate. Try to create hate between. Uh, 
the immigrants try to make the country more isolate uh, isolate their country from basically Europe the brexit thing he campaigned for it nothing's more relatable than a shitty haircut definitely <laughs> Defi- definitely <laughs> <laughs> don't you don't have to tell me that uh, that and uh, uh there there has been politicians in Brazil I think what's uh, I forgot I'm forgetting his name but even he uh, ridiculed uh, the media uh t- called it fake news uh s- and so that's that's what I uh, that's what I uh, wanted to talk about uh, so that's what I that's why what, what I wanted to say is that the many politicians around the world are using similar strategies to Trump since then and it has been working i think that there was a french politician who was really close to becoming the president of Fran- france who was really popular i think he was second in the running who used similar strategies he was basically the second trump bolsonaro yeah bolsonaro from brazil thank you prefer uh yeah what do you think about that I have no fucking clue. Uh, I mean, I have a clue about, yeah, if people are using his um, strategies and things like that, which it does seem with, with like, Bojo and, as you mentioned, uh, the guy running in India, I believe, mm. um, and other people, then, yeah, that's probably not a good thing or most definitely not a good thing. And it's, um, it, it's uh, worse. But I'm not too aware of those themselves. I'm sure it does. Um, when <laughs> you using media and stuff like that is completely a um viable strategy yeah i think yeah that's all i i think that that was it i i kind of wanted to talk about the us hong kong kashmir spain venezuela i think that's a whole different conversation so let's just skip it i think this is it for today that's all i had uh, i'll read donations Work with at Z- <laughs> what? <laughs> Just because I actually can read donations. <laughs> Work with at sampepper.co. I'll read donations. That's, that's, that's Sam's fucking um, Streamlabs link. <laughs> oh, okay. Or it's not the link, but it's the PayPal. I Actually, I don't know if that would actually... No, it wouldn't pop up on Streamlabs. You'd be <laughs> fucked. Don't donate to that if you see it. Uh, I'd have yeah. to send you the link. There's just the link on Sam's thing. But um, no one donate today. This is on me and Ted. Isn't it Sam Rings? I don't know. Or if you just donated. Let me refresh. I could actually check that too. Admin privileges. What? Actually, this is manager privileges. No, you didn't. I have, I have, no, I have no clue what's going on. Nothing. Nothing's going on. Oh, okay. He was just trolling. But, <laughs> but um, engaging chat. P, thank you for that link on Discord. If you're watching, I'm actually gonna watch that Bert Kreisner thing. Um, I'll watch it when no coworker leaves. Bach, Grieg, you are an absolute fucking degenerate, and um, you should probably just start a stream kind of similar to Blades. I think you'd be very successful. I think you have it in you. <laughs> um i would thanks for the chat jwc thanks for the chat chew her <laughs> did you actually donate to his stream up or just the paypal link because if you don't his paypal link you just got a text message i think that's it yeah no there's no stream ups uh, i don't want to i don't think i have access to paypal i might be able to... no i don't um therapy cheer I don't know who else is in chat. Thank you, Teddy, for having me on. <laughs> I re- I really thank you for thanking everyone in the chat on behalf of me. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. No, for- I th- whoa, 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 Ted. This is our first major fucking disagreement here, all right? <laughs> I was thanking them on behalf of me, not you. All right? As long uh, as we agree a, on that, we're it, fine. It, it was a joke. It was a joke. I uh, know. I'm, I'm just messing. Yeah, so thank uh, thank you for coming on the stream, Jank. I think 
this was interesting. Hopefully, hope you uh, liked it. I I wasn't engaging in the chat before, uh, because I wanted to keep it more podcast style. I still don't know how I'm going to engage in chat, uh, uh, and keep it as in a podcast podcast it, format. One way to think about it that I think might be beneficial for you because it's also really hard to read chat even if there's only a few people. Um, maybe set a timer and read chat either between topics mm -hmm. or every 30 minutes or something like that. That's that's that, that's one of the things I was thinking. I was thinking uh, J, uh, ch read chat between topics or relevant to the topic, but I think the conversation could have been moved on and would have to look back uh, to go back to the conversation again. Uh, that's one of the things I was thinking. I was thinking sure. again and uh, like go doing it in the middle but yeah i'm still figuring it out this was the first stream thank you thank you prefer and helping out uh helping out with the stream thank you Sp uh, spook for being here thank you uh thank you therapy thank you Jew. thank you jwc thank you uh riley i i saw you i think a uh, uh, few of the names i didn't recognize i don't know if it's from discord or not uh, uh, psych, psychedelic, psychedelic, psychedelic. Uh, I don't know. Uh, thank you, Olo Yang Gang. Hashtag Yang Gang. Am I right? Thousand dollar a month. Here we come. Actually, no. I I would have to get citizenship for that. I'm I'm looking for uh prospects for marriage. So let me know. Hit me up in the DMs. I've been denied by Jank and Scat already. Uh, 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 what else? Uh, uh, do, 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 P, yeah, thank you, P, Trump 2020. <laughs> uh, oh, man, that'd be, that, it could happen, it could. I just hope he doesn't screw me with the, uh, not green card. Oh, I so. think there's a large chance that <laughs> there is a larger chance Trump wins than most of the people talked about in oh, the definitely. media for the left right now. <laughs> I think he should he should have the lead by right now. Like the it, it, even right now the polls show he's not in the lead. <laughs> but yeah, there's a well, I mean it comes down to partisan stuff as we mentioned before. In the end mm. there's only one democrat and the re republican that is going to be the one republican is going to be Trump. So yeah. he has a better chance than like most of the people running on the Democratic side, and it's shitty to admit, but that's how. Yeah, as long as long as I can get a job and stay there without me having a million dollars in my in my bank account, <laughs> I I don't care who gets elected. <laughs> Hey, your vote is for Bernie then. <laughs> Have a good one, bud. I'm out. Um, yeah, thank, thank you. Guys. I'm hanging up on the call. Says, thank you, Jang. Thank you very much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. You stayed for so long. Uh, thank you for the time. I can't give... Oh, he's, he already left, but I will let him know in the text. Uh, yeah, I'm just going back in the chat and... Uh, thanking everyone basically i will turn the music on a little bit uh and see i'll come back